Because in this case, these all five of these are the most important constants in math. 
Function example one f of x equals two e to the x plus three. So we graph it the same way we graph every other exponential function. We just pick your x values. It doesn't matter which one. Um, but it's easy to be whatever turns the exponent to zero. So in this case, it's just going to be zero, and we just use one. Whatever turns the exponent to one, you want to keep it kind of as easy as possible. So when you plug in zero. What we get is 2 times 1 plus 3. If anything to the 0 power, it's always going to be 1. So you have 2 times 1, which is 2 plus 3, which is 5. Give a point, 0, 5. And when you plug in 1 for x, we get 2 times e to the first power plus 3. Uh, e, like I said, is an irrational number. It kind of goes on forever. So the exact answer for the y value of x is 1 is 2e plus 3. I wouldn't say 7, but we do want to approximate so we can actually graph it. It's kind of graph 2e plus 3. It's kind of, like, you know, ridiculous, right? You don't have to put that in. But what you can say is that, well, if e is about 2.7, 2 times 2.7 is 5.4. 5.4 plus 3 is 8.4. Uh, 8 we just say, well, it's approximately 8.4. And we're doing that just so we can actually graph it. 8.4 is plenty to be able to graph it after. So we have a point 0 and 1, and we go up to. It can't, it, when the base is just e, it's a growth function, but if you have a base like 1 over e, that'll be. All right, so we have the vertical asymptote or horizontal asymptote, sorry, at y equals 3. So you go ahead and graph that first. And then at the points 0, 5, and 1, about 8.4, so way up there. It says E is approximately 2.718. Yeah, it makes it a growth function, exactly. So e, anything with a base of e is a growth function. That means you start near the asymptote, and then you grow away from it. You start near it, and you grow away. That's what makes it a growth function. Um, something else to kind of look to kind of pay attention to when it comes to exponential functions is that anytime you have a point like 1, 2, e to the 3, that y value, it tells you what your a and your k are. So let's say we give you a problem where we give you two points. And we tell you we'll solve for a, b, and k, or whatever it is, or a, h, and k. You can look at the point and you get your a and k value right away. Because the number you multiply e with, that's your a term. And the number you're adding to that e term is your k. So no matter what x value you plug in, whatever you multiply e with, that's going to be your a. Whatever you're adding to it, that's going to be your k. Does that make sense? All right, so how do you guys go ahead and try graphing two on your own? Okay, so let's go over number two. So we have negative one fourth e to the x minus two plus uh, plus one. So we're gonna go ahead and graph this. Take two, any two points you want. So in this case, I'll use two because I'll make the exponent uh, zero, and I'll use three to go make it one. So we have f of two. We get negative one fourth e to the zero, which is one plus one, or just negative one fourth plus one, which will give me a positive three fourths. Then f of three. Uh, that's negative one over four. E to the 3 minus 2, which is 1, all plus 1. So that's what I'm going to put. 
So at once, that's the exact point is exactly negative one four t plus one. Uh, but be able to graph that on the side of the approximate value, and it's the approximate value about zero point six or about six. So this thing zero point six. Rational the most important numbers you ever do are already rational. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 rational. Okay, not every like statistics are like steady things is gonna be exact. Yeah, and actually when you kind of look at it, um most not most numbers, but like, almost all numbers are irrational chances of that you're proving like most numbers in real life are irrational numbers, and I need to see numbers. Yeah, it's, it's, it's that's how it is. Yeah, I'm sure that was based by 12 newspapers, in fact, you can get that Yeah, exactly. You have Yeah. But a paper, that's like, also has Six by two? Yeah. You have it No, like six by two, the typing right? It also has a So it is, yeah, that's that. Yeah. Yeah, actually, it's actually not even debate. It's actually it's been proven that because we're all three the same, we actually can't see anything that's one dimensional or two dimensional. Even stuff on the screen it has some very, very small amount of depth, but it actually has depth to it. So everything in the screen can't really see 2D or 4D. I think the book about it. Never read it, so I don't read it, but I read the book. Okay. So we're going to graph this. My vertical asymptote is one. So go ahead and graph it. And we have the points two, three, four. So say one, two, two, and three, four could be about right here. And then three and about point three. So a third of the way up will say about right there. It is a growth function. So you start here the asymptote, you kind of grow away from it. So something like that. Make sure you have to get the point. And again, if I look at this part right here, this negative one fourth e plus one, the part that I multiply e with, that's my a. And the part I'm adding to it, that's my k. So that's always gonna be true anytime at any point as e can be a y. Any questions here? Are we good? So anything you have a point, like in this case three comma negative one four e plus one, the term you're multiplying e with that's gonna be your a, what you're adding to it is gonna be your k. Oh. And the reason I'm kind of saying this a lot is because in the next problem, we have a we have a, a, a problem very similar to that. On problem three, we're told to write an exponential function that passes through the points negative one, negative seven, and negative three comma negative three minus four over e squared. So I know it looks kind of ugly, but it's really not that bad. These are actually easier than the system of equation problems. So the equation is y equals a times e to the x minus a plus k. So look at these two points. What's my a value going to be? What we just talked about. Now, what am I multiplying here? Sorry? Not one fourth. So I know it kind of looks a little weird to keep on the bottom, but that just happens to be at the negative exponent. So what's being multiplied with that e? Four. Four. Or negative four, right? Yeah. So that's what my a value is. A is negative four. So what's my k? A is going to be negative three. Oh. That's what you're adding to it. You're adding subtracting to it. They kind of put it in a different order than we did in the previous two problems. It's still negative four with e squared plus like a negative three. Do I have a wrong? Oh, wait, no, I answered my own question. That's great. Okay. So you have a and we have k now. What? Yeah, so yeah, exactly. So it's like if I plug in some x, like what was the street problem right here? Put an x value by one. I have an x value of one here. What I get from my point is negative one, and then negative one fourth, 
e to the negative one plus one. Move to the bottom. So it doesn't really matter which side the key is on. It's whatever's being multiplied with, that's all it's still going to be. Make sense? Go ahead. So, I mean, is it like the other problems? No, just take it to for A because you can't really take it out because the base plus two point seven B is one Yeah, no, I was just saying that. Yeah. So just think you go to find our H our R H charge. But finding H is pretty easy. So I have my A and my K, and I have one extra point. So my current equation is Y equals negative four times E to the X minus H. I don't know what H is, all minus three. But at this point, negative one, negative seven. I can plug that in. And say, well, negative seven equals negative four times e to the x minus uh, minus h. Well, it's not x minus h, but what's that? Negative one minus my x is negative one, my y is negative seven. I can plug those in, and then I can solve for h this way. So I can add three over to get negative four equals negative four times e to the negative one over h or minus h. I want to isolate the E, so I can divide both sides by negative 4. So what I get is 1 equals E to the negative 1 minus 3. Divide both sides by negative 4, I get 1 equals E to the negative 1 minus H. And 1, that's the same thing as E to the 0, right? So I can say, well, E to the 0 equals E to the negative 1 minus H. Since 1 is the same thing as E to the 0. Everyone with me? Make sense? Oh. Are we good? Yes. So why? That's because they both have the same base of e now, right? So why is one? Anything okay. raised to the power of zero is always one. Anything raised to the power of zero is one. Except for two. So, but how do you know eight so, is negative one? How do you know that? I don't know why. Wait. How do you know eight to the power of negative one is negative one? Well, when I solve this out right here, I got one equals e to the negative one minus h, right? Does that make sense? Oh. And one, one is the same thing as e to the zero. One equals e to the zero. So I can just plug that in. So this is the equivalent of the same thing. Oh. And then from here, because we have the same base of e, I can just say, well, zero equals negative one minus h. Or h equals <gasps> negative one. Oh. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 I, I got the same answer, but I did plug in the point of 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 you don't need to point that. You don't need to point. It's just point you get something to get a little ugly. But yeah, you only you only really need point one. I'll look at it after. Any other questions? Are you okay? All right. Let's go on to number four. Number four is saying how much to the left or right the graph f of x equals negative three e raised to the five x plus ten plus seven be translated. Uh, that so that negative six four is a point on the graph. So I have a uh, function f of x equals negative three e to the five x plus ten all plus seven. And I don't know. Well, how can I move this graph left to right, left or right, so that negative six four is for sure going to be a point on the graph? So the first thing I want to do is I want to fix this equation because remember we don't. No matter what function we're graphing or what function we're looking at, you always want your, your x to not have a coefficient. Whether it's going to be quadratic or with any other function that we did, anytime you had a coefficient in front of x, you graph it out. So we need to do the same thing here. So I can say f of x equals negative 3, e raised to the 5 times x plus 2, all plus 7. Everyone hear that so far? And since I'm talking about translating the graph left to right, I'm talking about this. So I want to put in a variable of h into this equation. 
So I can figure out, well, what does H have to be so that this point is going to be on the ground? And this H, it has to go inside the parentheses. So we can say X plus 2 minus H. All plus seven. Okay, everyone okay with that? Do you understand why we're putting the H inside the parentheses and why we have to factor it out? Does that make sense? Why? Yeah. Because remember, in all our equations, we always did something uh, like this. It was always 1 over b x minus h, right? Yeah, that would involve we're putting the points off of. Yeah. But that's why you just factor up that 5 first, because it's all, no matter what equation you look at, it's always in the form 1 over b times x minus h. Yeah, that's true. Well, it's, it's part of the h of the whole thing, but it's a specific h on its own. Oh, right. So that's why you just factor that five. So from here, um, I'll put in the point negative six four, and I get that four equals negative three e raised to the five times my negative six plus two minus h. I'll put seven. And now let's do the same thing. Solve for h. So subtract the seven over. Negative three equals negative 3 e raised to the 5 times negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4 minus h. Yeah, we're going to end up doing that. We're going to divide both sides by negative 3. So we get 1 equals e to the 5 times negative 4 minus h. And just like before, 1 is the same thing as e to the 0. So we're going to rewrite this as e to the 0 equals e to the 5 times negative 4 minus h. So I can set 0 equal to 5 times negative 4 minus h. Divide both sides by 5. 0 equals negative 4 minus h. Or h equals negative 4. So if h equals negative 4, does that mean I'm going left or right? Uh, how many? Right or left. Right or left. In the equation is opposite. But the actual value itself is not four. Sorry? It's plus four. In the equation itself, it's opposite. So in the equation, you see x plus four, that means you have an h value is negative four, which means you're going left. So we need to move the graph to left four so that that point will stay on the graph. Does that make sense? Everyone okay with that? Yeah. We're good. Are we done? We're done. That's the next piece there. All right, this is the homework. 47 to 54, not just even. You do all of them. There's only seven problems. And the homework's not due until, I think, Monday. Yeah.